Oh, it is way too cold out here to be testing this. So Blue Eddy reached out to me to see if I wanted to test out their AC70 portable power station. I said, sure, why not? Let's give it the good old tripod try. Now let's go over some of the specs. This is the Blue Seti AC70. It has a capacity of 768 watt hours, has a 1000 watt inverter and 2000 watt power lifting. It's capable of charging in 1.5 hours for AC charging and it could charge with a solar panel of 500 watts, it has a Blue Seti app to monitor it, and it could be charged up to 3,000 life cycles. It has a 0.02 switching time for emergency UPS, ultra quiet mode, less than 50 dB, and it has the Blue Seti five year warranty. Now, if you want that warranty honored, you definitely need to save the box. Yes, save your box. And of course, if you're looking to purchase, links will be provided down below. Everything was well packed and nothing was damaged. Now let's go over the accessories that you receive with it. Here's the DC charging input, notice the red and white. And then we have the cigarette lighter one. And that's also a DC input charger. And just a side note, it'll charge slowly. They also include a standard three prong AC power cord. On the front, you have a USB-C 100 watt, a USB-A 12 watt, another 12 watt, another USB 100 watt, AC power and DC power. And you can run DC and AC together. And you have two standard 120 volt outlets on the right, DC input and output on the left. But as we take a look, this is actually pure sine wave for your AC output, which means that you can hook up like a laptop and not worry about it being damaged. You have your AC input on the right side, and then you have a ground also on the right side. And of course, I would definitely refer you to the user manual um, and pay attention to the current, like the amps are especially important. Um, this will automatically trip if it gets overloaded, but chances are, if it does trip, your amps are just too high. So just pay attention to that. Blue Eddy also has a Bluetooth app. Yes, you can monitor everything. It, you can change the standard charging to silent and turbo. Turbo will get it charged in 1.5 hours, but it does um, have a little bit higher noise if you decide to do that. We will not be using power lifting uh, because I am going to be hooking up uh, electronics that are, are not really like dumb electronics. Most of them will have um, circuit boards and stuff. So we're gonna leave the power lifting off. As mentioned, it could be basically a UPS. I have my X1 Carbon 3D printer plugged in behind it, and I just unplugged the AC from the Blue Eddy power bank. And as you can see, I could still use um, the 3D printer, like nothing happened. Since the X1 Carbon is currently plugged into the AC70, let's go ahead and run a quick print and see how it could power it. So far, everything is looking good. This is going to just be a standard uh, bench test and the overall print will be about 40 minutes long. That's with all the printer calibrations and everything. And we can see that uh, it definitely completed. And how much power did it use? Let's take a look. Not too bad, only 8% for about 40 minutes. So yes, we could go ahead and uh, run a 3D printer, use it as a UPS if you so choose. So that way, if your uh, power goes out, your printer will still run. And yep, everything came out rather nice. <laughs> Wouldn't expect anything else. So now let's do a longer print. This print is going to be about four hours long. And it's charged all the way up. It was 100%, but now it dropped down to uh, 99 but you can see it's going hovering around uh, 400 watts of output now the display does time out on the blue city ac70 it's of course to conserve power i'm actually charging the phone that's doing the time lapse as well as running the ac so it's actually doing a dual mode right now if you're not using the ac be sure to turn it off because the inverter will always draw power off the battery and you don't want to have 
any unnecessary draw on it if it's not being used. So just go ahead and turn it off if it's not being used. So the printer ran for about four and a half hours and it used about 80% of the battery. Now that's pretty darn efficient, especially for a power station of this size. Well, let's see how it works with a laser. Yes, it wouldn't be Tripods Garage unless we didn't try a laser. This is the GWIC Pro 30 watt fiber laser. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Of course, the draw is gonna be very minimal because right now it's just in power on mode. But once we start uh, engraving, we should see some wattage. Now this is a 30 watt fiber laser, but we can see that's averaging around 230 watts of power. Um, it's actually engraving at about 90% power. So it looks like, um, yeah, we are doing pretty good for power. This is uh, doing a 3D relief on a coin and this whole job should take about two and a half hours. Now this is kind of a bit of the higher spectrum for a portable laser engraver. And the reason why I'm doing this is because there are people that go to um, craft shows that bring lasers with protective shielding and do basically custom things on the fly. So given that this is the GWIC Pro 30 watt, uh, you most likely would be able to run like the X-Tool F1 and F1 Ultra. But of course you definitely want to give it a try ahead of time. Now I want to mention that the fume extractor is not plugged into this. So this is just solely the laser engraver. And if you were to have the fume extractor hooked up, yeah, it would definitely draw a lot more power off of this unit. But it was all done and it, it's basically used uh, about 58% of the battery. Considering that most um, items, personal items, take about five to 10 minutes to engrave, this should last you pretty much all day. And just make sure that you conserve power by turning off the inverter, which is the AC. Now let's take a look at what I engraved. Yep, this is Merry Grinchmas. It is the Grinch. I think this came out really nice. And this is a coin by Robert Brands. You could actually uh, join his Patreon if you want. His link is down below if you're into any type of 3D relief engraving challenge coins. And that leads us to today's video sponsor, PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. Now, technically, this can be a solar generator. You can buy the optional 200 watt solar panel and go ahead and plug it into the DC input. Right now, I'm getting about 141 watts. I readjusted it again, pointed it more at the sun, and now I'm getting about 140. 50 watts. Now, technically, I should not be charging it at this temperature. Right now, it is 26 degrees, and the charging temperature should be about 32 or higher. So, do not do this. Uh, I was just trying to do this on a, the sunniest day, and now it's one of the coldest days. And I moved it again, and I got to 153 watts. Not too bad for it, especially for how cold it is. And it's charging pretty good. Um, you can see the sun is now kind of behind my little tree there, but most of the panel is getting direct sunlight. Again, it is very cold out right now. I'm going to pack it up and bring it inside because it's just freezing out here. And um, I got to about 62% in about two hours. So 20% in two hours and direct sunlight, not too bad. Now let's test it on some small appliances. AC is on, I'm going to make some coffee. And man, my coffee has been really bitter lately. I think it might just because of this coffee cup. Yeah, this, this guy just makes everything a little bit bitter. But anyways, let's go ahead and um, brew some coffee off of a Keurig and see how well it handles that. Now I just unplugged it from the wall and plugged it into the Blue Eddy. And we're seeing about 360-ish watts and it drops and it's going to stay dropped right now as it dispenses the hot water into the coffee cup. And we really won't see it spike up and use anything until it's done dispensing the water. 
into the coffee cup. Once the hot water is dispensed, you will start seeing it heat up. Now the water it has replaced it with. And we can see now it is at 1400 plus watts and we expect it to stay there for a little bit of time. No, it didn't shut off, um, it's just a display shut off. And it's going to go ahead and cycle it a few times. So we'll see it go down to zero again, and then we'll see it spike. And once we see it spike, that means it's actually going to start heating up the water. And then we can just watch this until we go ahead and do another you know, cup of coffee, or until that internal temperature of that water has reached its um, desired temperature. Now I did fill up this uh, coffee cup three times and it ran perfectly. Even though that this is pulling out more wattage than what it's recommended, it's not that for that long. So it definitely works with a Keurig really nicely. Now let's continue on to something else. Now we're going to try an air fryer. I have three different settings, 900, 1500, and 1800. Now if you really want to kill a battery very quickly, you use a heating element. Now, to be fair, I do not expect this to work with the 1500 or 1800, but we're gonna give it a try anyways. So I did fire it up on the 1800 and um, we will see that the AC will uh, start yep, blinking. That means it faulted and it was just too much for it to handle. That's because the heating element turned right on to max. So let's now reset the AC and now we're gonna try the 1500. Again, I do not expect either of these to work, but now let's give that a try. And since the display is on, we should see it in real time what it does. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And hit start right about now. So we see it jump 1500 and boom, done. Yep, definitely cannot handle that. So let's go ahead and reset it. And now we're gonna try the lowest setting. Now the lowest setting is 900 watts, but I do have a feeling even before I watch this and start editing this video that that 900 watt is going to actually go higher. It just seems like it should, because not only are we doing the heating element, but we're also doing um, you know the fans and just powering it on. So yeah, everything is gonna be more than 900. And right now we're looking at uh, 1100 and change. So 1130-ish is where it's around and it seems to be working. So we're at 900 watts and I'm running a time lapse of 15 minutes. And again, if you really want to kill a battery, heating elements or something like this will really kill a battery fast. And you will see how fast it really does kill the battery. I mean, to me, if we had a power loss, I would not be using a, uh, a you know power station like this to run an air fryer. To me, it's <laughs> it's not a priority list. I mean, right here, you can see that it knocked off 30% of the power in just only 15 minutes. I would rather use it for something like a, I don't know, like a refrigerator or something that cycles and you could probably get a lot longer run time off of it and maintain your food. So what are my overall thoughts on this Blue Eddy AC70? Well, I am pretty impressed. This thing is a little heavy at 22.5 pounds, but you know what? the performance far exceeded my expectations. I mean, I really came into this not expecting much at all. I did not expect it to power a 3D printer for four and a half hours and still have 41% of the battery life. And basically being able to run a laser engraving machine almost all day, say if you're at a craft fair. I mean, literally it does everything that and more than I thought it could. I think this is a great solution if you are camping, but definitely not camping in bad weather. So you cannot really charge this at under, you know, 36 degrees. The solar panel and this AC70 is not water resistant. I mean, the solar panel itself um, is like splash resistant, but um, you really can't uh, have it out there in inclement weather. So you really need to um, pay attention to this. And to be fair, this is one of the most entry level machines. So if you're looking for any type of portable power station, I would suggest researching of what you want first, because again, this is more of the entry level. You have plenty of other options available. 
and you got ones that could practically almost run almost like your whole house for a small period of time just in case there's a power outage. So if you're looking to purchase something, there are links down below. And I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripods Garage.